Many of the inventions of the past 100 years have changed the way we live our lives. Mobile phones are owned by almost 6 billion people worldwide. And when over 6 trillion texts are sent every year, many of us believe that we can't live without them. People are always trying to think of the next big invention that's going to change the world. But for some inventors, this doesn't mean designing a new phone app or building a smaller, quicker, lighter computer. For some inventors, it's about looking at what everyone really can't live without. Emily Cummins is a young inventor who is looking for new ways to help people. She started inventing at a very young age. At the age of four, my granddad gave me a hammer. I used to spend hours with him in his shed at the bottom of the garden. As I got older, he would teach me about the different properties of materials and how to use the tools and the machinery in his shed. While she was still at school, Emily designed a new type of fridge. But her fridge doesn't look like the ones that most of us have in our kitchens. It's designed to be used in areas where there isn't any electricity. I spent a lot of time researching how to redesign the refrigerator. I realised that people in Africa weren't able to store food and medicine because they didn't have access to electricity or refrigerators. The design was very simple. A small cylinder inside a larger one. You put your food or medicine in the small cylinder. Between the two cylinders, you put some material that stays wet, like sand or soil. In the sun, the fridge then sweats, just like a person. The water evaporates and pulls the heat out of the small cylinder and the contents stay cool. The fridge was designed so anyone anywhere could make it, with simple tools and materials. And Emily wanted to help people do this. When I was 18, I travelled to Africa on my own, which was really scary at first. But actually, when I got there, people were really welcoming. They invited me into their homes, they looked after me, they listened to me and we shared ideas. So although initially I was frightened about the experience, it was actually incredible. It is estimated that about 60% of the world's population need eyeglasses to see clearly. Everyone should have their eyes checked regularly by an eye care professional. But in parts of Africa, there's only one eye care professional for 8 million of the population. If you can't see, you might not be able to read or drive or even work. Josh Silver is a professor of physics. He invented a new kind of eyeglasses to solve this problem. These, these eyeglasses are rather interesting, rather special in a way. Um, I call them adaptive eyeglasses and I will demonstrate them for you. The eyeglasses work by adding liquid to the lenses. I want to see clearly in the distance. I just, I'm covering up one eye. I'm adjusting the lens in the other eye until I've got nice clear vision. I then do the same with the other eye, and there we are. Right, I can now see clearly in the distance. So um, these glasses have the interesting feature that I can change each lens so as to suit my vision and get clear vision. When you go through this correction procedure and you get the eyeglasses set to your vision you don't wear them like that you do up the screws on this frame and you cut off the adjusters 
and then you end up with this, which you can wear. And this is my pair. And there are about 40,000 or so of these in use now in about 20 countries. It's taken Josh over 20 years of research to develop these eyeglasses. He travelled to Africa to see how his eyeglasses could help people. Henry A.J. Mensah was the first person to get a pair of Josh's eyeglasses. Shall we try the glasses and see if that helps you with threading it? Henry was a tailor in a small village in Ghana. He needed good eyesight to do his job making clothes. Can you see more clearly? But his eyesight was getting worse. Ah, he did it immediately, so it works. He was trying to thread a needle and he couldn't. And he put these on, he adjusted them, and he just threaded the needle immediately. And uh, what he did was he then, he then started operating his sewing machine much faster. Thank you. This experience proved that Josh's eyeglasses can work. Today, he is still improving his invention and looking for ways of producing adaptive eyewear for everyone who needs it. Thank you. My motivation for the work is to see those billions of people that need eyewear get it. No one can live without water. But today, over a billion people live in water poverty. They haven't got easy access to clean water. Drinking dirty water makes millions of people sick and kills thousands of people every day. After seeing the terrible result of the Asian tsunami in 2004, inventor Michael Pritchard decided he wanted to do something about this problem. It is expensive and difficult to send bottles of clean water to disaster areas. Michael thought it was a simple problem. Water is everywhere and Mother Nature has her own way of getting water to people. They're called the clouds. They pick the water up from the sea for free they take the salt out of it for free. They transport it hundreds of miles for free. And then they dump it on the mountains and the rivers and the streams. And where do people live? Near water. So Michael Pritchard invented the Lifesaver water bottle. Using a special filter, the bottle can clean any water, making it safe to drink. What the Lifesaver bottle allows people to do is take that water, put it in the bottle, give it a few pumps, and the bottle, just through filtration, very small holes, removes all of the bacteria and all of the viruses and makes the water sterile and safe to drink. This new technology saves people's lives, and Michael has developed more products using his technology, like the Lifesaver Jerry Can. The Lifesaver Jerry Can can process up to 20,000 litres of water and is specifically designed to go into people's homes and to be used on an everyday basis. Michael has travelled around the world seeing his products in action, saving lives. We do many projects around the world to help people who do not have access to clean drinking water, whether that be in Malaysia or in Haiti or in Pakistan or in India. We do lots of projects around the world to make sure that people have access to clean water, not just for a day or for a week, but for life. 